Chapter 8 Attached By the gods, Jacob, your Yao Wei can learn to be more tolerable, Rachel said as she stormed into her tent. Of what harm are a few moments of devotion to our ancestors? He had found her prostrating to the carved statues in her father's idol shelter, and it made him furious. I forbid you! Jacob followed after her. She was stubborn. He had known from the beginning and indulged her, even enjoyed her headiness. But this adamant devotion to dead carvings was abominable. You are a Hebrew woman now. Why do you cling to lifeless statues when we serve a living God? Those statues represent our ancestors, Jacob. They're not dead. They watch over us and help guide us. Rachel loosened her curls and began combing her hair, completely unmoved by Jacob's outburst. Jacob glared at his wife. The lamplight cast a golden glow on her supple skin, and her beautiful curls fell grandly down her shoulders. But at that moment, all he could see was her outright rebellion. He grunted in frustration and stormed out to clear his head. He could hear the playful screams of his sons as he strolled aimlessly. Standing at a distance, he smiled as he watched his older boys chase after a rodent. Leah sat in front of her tent, nursing his newborn Levi, while singing softly to him. Guide me, O thou great Yahweh, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. His heart warmed as he listened to the song of worship he had taught them. Jacob observed her frame as she arose to hand the baby over to Zilpa. Even after three births, she remained slender, almost frail, unlike Rachel with her beautiful curves and lustrous eyes. Jacob! Leah exclaimed, noticing him in the shadows. He had scared her. Even Zilpa appeared shocked to see him. He hardly ever came around this late, except it was Leah's night. Reuben and Simeon ran to him, and he lifted both boys, supporting them firmly on his waist. You look famished. All is well? Leah said as her maid led the children away. She still appeared puzzled by his presence. Yes, all is well. Jacob assessed his appearance. She was right. He had spent the evening after a long day searching for Rachel and then arguing with her. Just a moment, Leah said as she dashed behind the tent and returned with a bowl of water. Leah set the bowl down and motioned for Jacob to sit. There's really no need, Jacob said, thinking of Rachel. He should get back to her before she began to worry. Leah looked up at him with pleading eyes. Please, Jacob. She said, still kneeling and holding onto the bowl. Very well. He sat and watched as she carefully washed his feet. A knot tightened in his chest as he recalled all the ways he had treated her wrong. Consumed with his desire for vengeance, he had hated her even after she gave him his first two sons. He poured all his attention on Rachel, the woman he loved deeply. But his love was not enough to ignite in her a devotion to the God of his fathers. Leah dried his feet with a towel and poured out the water. Her faith had grown with the birth of each of her sons, and many times he found himself wishing Rachel had some of her qualities. Sing that song again, he said to her. Color rushed to her pale cheeks as she sat across from him. Guide me, O thou great Yahweh, 
pilgrim through this barren land. She bowed her head and sang her heart out, and Jacob was convinced the words meant as much to her as they did to him. The soothing words sewing on Leah's rich voice eased his troubled nerves. Sometimes he felt like a lost wanderer, running from the wrath of his elder brother and caught in the devious claws of his uncle. Though Yahweh had been faithful, his years in Haran had been full of toil, yet he had no possessions to show for it. Filled with a deep longing for his homeland, the freedom of his father's house, his people, his mother, Jacob knew he would be spending the night here with Leah. The last five days were the best of Leah's life. Starting from the evening, Jacob emerged out of nowhere to spend the night with her. As she watched him leave the following morning, she thought it might have been a dream. But he returned the following evening, and the next. Leah sat in front of her tent, awaiting Jacob's return again. She snuggled Levi, certain she looked more attractive, with him in her arms. Oh. She had known Jacob would come to admire her after Levi's birth. Jacob had held her and asked for her forgiveness. He wanted to hear her sing. He wanted to tell her stories of his homeland. She never bothered to ask what happened between him and Rachel. She didn't care. All that mattered was that he wanted her. In five days, she had found new hope and meaning for her life. Being away from Rachel wasn't as easy as Jacob imagined. She had been too stubborn to seek him out, but today he received word from her maid that she was unwell. He wasn't sure he believed it, yet he had spent the rest of the day thinking about her. <laughs> oh, Jacob, I couldn't bear it. You left me in the greatest time of need. <laughs> Rachel cried. When he came to her tent. Can't you see? All I want is to give you a son. Jacob tried to comfort his wife. He stroked her messy curls. How he missed her. We must trust in the Lord, my dear. We must trust him. But he doesn't care about me. She let a short laugh break through. <laughs> Am I to sit idly, waiting for a god I can't even see? <laughs> oh, that she had the faith of his mother, who had come from this very land, yet embraced the god of Abraham. But he understood her frustration and believed it to be temporary. Rachel would come around with time. She was simply hurting. Rachel bit her lip. She must have noticed his displeasure at her outburst. I am not to blame, Jacob. You don't know how it feels. Oh, you don't. It's okay, my love. I am here now. Rachel clung to him, holding her tight. He drank in her scent and wondered how he had been able to stay away. Leah strolled back and forth, the length of her tent, rocking Levi. The night was fast spent, and her other children were asleep, but she couldn't leave. After hours outside, Zilpah came to her. Let me put the child to rest, my lady. No. She shoved the maid's hand away and clung to Levi, her latest symbol of hope. She half expected this day would come, 
but nothing could have prepared her for this deep, pitted emptiness in her belly. Like a part of her had been ripped out, she felt Jacob's abandonment physically. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh, be merciful. She said, snuggling Levi. Maybe things would be better now and Jacob would come to her more often. But as the days and weeks passed, it was clear Jacob's attention was once again fixed on his precious Rachel and more than ever. <laughs>